Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Well, first, you know, I will start with my tea. As you know, this is my Paule tea, you know, something very good for diabetic and for early morning birds, guys like me. Today, I'm going to bring to you an understanding on uric acid. I understand that many people perceive that if you suffer from uric acid, you're going to end up with gout or gouty arthritis, and most likely you're going to be taking medication forever. I'm going to bring to you something else. I'm going to bring to you the two bad things that uric acid does, how the body produces uric acid, from a biochemistry and physiology point of view, and all based on scientific and clinical evidence. I hope you like it. As you know, all I do is for educational purposes, for my students, for my patients, and for my family, and any other colleague that like to follow my scientific clinical uh, videos lecture. I have no conflicts of interest whatsoever. Everything I do, once again, is for educational purposes. All right, so, what you see here is a mitochondria. Is that place in our cells that produce energy? That spark that you see there, we call that ATP, adenosine triphosphate, meaning three phosphates together. Once we detach one to it, it becomes ADP adenosine diphosphate but that still continues to be breaking apart into AMP adenosine monophosphate still that one is going to be breaking apart into IMP inosine monophosphate and then that's when we have uric acid and the uric acid is normally excreted in the urine. Now, when we talk about uric acid, from where do we get uric acid? Well, we could get uric acid from amino acids that we found in meat because we have that in what we call purine. Purine is like a few combination of adenine and guanine. Adenine is an example of purine, which is another example of guanine. Now, not only those two, we have also have hyposantin and we also have santin, which are all the type of purines. But I just want to say to you that when we break apart this amino acid, that's how we're going to start getting the uric acid. So if in a point in time in your life, you want to reduce the amount of uric acid, one of the good things be that you constrict yourself to eat too much meat. Now, besides that, we have also glucose. And what is glucose? Glucose is made of, of sugar and fructose. Fructose is the sweet molecules in sugar. Once we have those two, all of them contribute specifically to what? To uric acid. And I'm going to tell you why they contribute to uric acid, specifically because they go to a biochemical pathophysiology or physiology in which they will cause damage to your mitochondria and to something else that is coming up to you. These are my scientific evidence. You could Google it, escape the National Institute of Health, and you'll see that everything that I'm telling you comes from those scientific evidence. Now, let's ask a question. What causes uric acid to go up? Well, it's not one, it's not two reasons, it's three reasons. Well, if you have kidney disease, 
your body won't be able to actually uh, break apart and throw it out. But if we eat or we consume a lot of meat, and if we consume a lot of fructose, fructose is actually the sweet part of sugar. Glucose normally is metabolized, is absorbed, is broken apart, is used for e by every cell in your body. But fructose is only metabolized or absorbed or trying to break apart at the liver. And that is one of the reasons that fructose is not good because the liver, when it uses the fructose, it will create fatty liver. Now, uric acid is very important. Let me tell you why. You see this CPT? That CPT is a specifically and a specific enzyme. You know, and the ENS is another enzyme. Uric acid break those enzymes. Now, uric acid, let's start with the number one, with the enzyme endothelial nitric synthase. That enzyme is that activates nitric oxide, which is needed for or arteries or blood vessels relaxation. Therefore, it will lower your blood, your blood pressure. So if there is a blockage of this enzyme, you will be resulting in what? In hypertension, in high blood pressure. That CPT1 also is another enzyme that blocks what is called beta oxidation when we break fatty acid and that happens at the mitochondria. That CPT1 means carnitine palmitol transferase and actually what it does is breaking apart or bringing the carnitine which is like a card to uh, of the fatty acids inside the mitochondria so the body could break it apart. So if the body cannot be breaking apart the fatty acid, we're going to have an increase in fatty acid. Therefore, that is going to contribute to what? To fatty liver. So once again, uric acid is not just for gouty arthritis as we are thinking. No, uric acid is a very bad player in what? In fatty liver disease and in hypertension. Those there that you could see are my scientific evidence. There are way, way, way much things to talk about uric acid, but I want you to understand that if you are suffering, if you eat a lot at meat, if you are heavy loaded with heavy metals, you will have a problem with fatty liver, you will have a problem with hypertension, you will have a problem with kidney disease, and none of those things are good, and they contribute to metabolic syndrome, specifically to mitochondria dysfunction. My tea, and as you can see, uric acid is a very bad player. Please subscribe to my channel, help me, ask questions, I'm here for you. Cheers!